Uh, my name is Otis Buxton Jr. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Um, actually grew up on Monument and Port Street, which was uh, kind of a rough neighborhood growing up in the, the 70s and the early 80s. Um, a lot of crazy stuff going on. Um, so I had to kind of fight with the temptation of succumbing to peer pressure. Um, but fortunately, um, I had a mom and a dad who, and a grandmother who, who took a very keen interest in me. And um, so I lived with my grandmother for a while um, with her and her husband, my grandfather. And, um, and they just took me under their wing. I went to school there. And, and it's different, you know, learning from someone that's older. Um, the values are different. Um, you know, so back then it was hit you across your head if you sleep in church, and you appreciated that. I, I think that built a lot of character in me. Um, and then I, I, as I got older, um, I met my wife. Um, I've been married for almost 17 years. Um, and we have two children together. We actually met as freshmen in high school at Dunbar High School. And, um, and to see that now we're still married, um, my high school sweetheart, we have two children, um, two wonderful kids, and, and I just feel like I'm rich. And you know, the one thing my wife asked me um, was, are you fulfilled? And, and I said to her, I said, well, you know, if you look at it in terms of money, you know, I, I'm not a millionaire, no, I'm not rich, but I'm, I'm rich in things. Um, you know, I'm rich in family. I have two children. I have a, a wonderful partner who's a friend. Um, I have two cars. I have a job. Um, my kids are in school. They're doing well. They've never been in trouble with the law. Um, so, so in that, in terms of that, I am rich um, to me. And um, so I can't, you know, I, I can't complain at all. Um, there's a lot of things that I wish were better. Um, especially with myself being a black man growing up in Baltimore City. Um, I wish the crime wasn't as huge as it is. Um, you know, there are so many inmates in prison that are, that are black men. Um, we don't graduate from high school in large numbers. Um, we're not in college in large numbers. So in terms of that, there are some things that I wish that could be better. Um, I pray about that. Um, I do my small part by working with nonprofits. I've worked with juveniles for, for several years now. Um, so that's kind of where I do my little part. That, you know, when, when, when the end comes, I could say um, I tried. I, I did my little part to, to help my, my race of people. And, um, and I think if each one of us just put a little, a little bit in, you know, we could we could stop this flow of, of violence because it's it's to each other, and and that's the crazy part about it, that you know it can turn around. You know, um, it wasn't always this way. Um, one of the things that I remember that was a signature, and I believe the year was 1993. I believe in Baltimore City we had about 353 homicides, and um, and myself and a friend. We sat there and we counted the friends that we lost that summer, and it was it was just tremendously shocking to count. Like we were just counting and like, are we at ten? And 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 then we went over ten. And this was just from a one mile radius in East Baltimore, where we lost these friends. So um, so that's what caused me to kind of view my life and, and take a strong interest in my son and, and making sure he's a teenager now and he's at that age where, you know, he could turn one arrest makes can change your whole entire life. Um, you know, can you become a police officer? Probably not. Um, will the fire department accept you? Probably not. Um, can you work any federal job? Probably not. So those are the things that I try to tell young folk that um, and you can see the old man coming out me young folk mm -hmm. <laughs> but I try to preach to them that an arrest can change your life for the worse um, it doesn't mean that's the end but it just makes that mountain that harder to climb um, 
So I just encourage all of our, our young black men to, um, to grab onto something or someone um, that's doing something positive. Um, I know it's cool to, to wear the dope tennis and, and things like that and in and, and, and the hood, the working man is a sucker. Um, but guess what? This working man got the LeBron elites. They were $250. I'm proud to say that. Um, I'm not proud that I spent $250, but just the fact that I work every day and, and I can afford to buy something that I want. And, and I'm not out here you know, committing any crime. Um, I don't have to snatch anyone's pocketbook. I don't have to rob anyone. And I can still, every now and then, and it's not often, but I can treat myself when I say, hey, I got a few extra dollars. I want to buy something that, that just pleases me. And, um, and that's the luxury of you know, being able to work every day and take care of your family. That's just a small reward. Um, it may be materialistic, but it just made me happy. And sometimes you have to do that. And, and my wife constantly preaches that, you know, babe, do something for you. Do something that you like to do. And um, having a partner like that is, is, is just wonderful, um, you know, to have unconditional love. And I think that's missing in a lot of um, people's lives, especially young black men. We don't have that unconditional love. A lot of people love us because of what we can do for them or what we can provide for them. But, you know, myself growing up with, with a family of five brothers and sisters, um, we've always felt that unconditional love. We supported each other, um, and I try to do the same thing um, for my fellow brothers and sisters.